Now let's talk a bit about uh, a different aspect of breast cancer, uh, women whose tumors are hormone receptor positive but HER2 negative. Uh, there are some very exciting advances in treatment here as well. Aromatase inhibitors generally, I think by most of us for postmenopausal women, are considered the current standard of care uh, for the initial treatment of women with hormone receptor positive advanced breast cancer. And I think most of us would agree with that. Um, the real issue, I think, is are there replacements or are there substitutions? Really, that revolves, I think, around fulvestrant uh, more than anything. There have been a number of clinical trials with fulvestrant that have been performed over the last several years, some of which actually uh, have some contradictory uh, information. Uh, for example, the SWOG study uh, in uh, untreated women, uh, women who had never had hormone therapy before, uh, actually showed an uh, advantage in terms of disease-free survival or progression-free survival to women receiving the combination of fulvestrant uh, and anastrozole versus anastrozole alone. Uh, there are several trials uh, with mixed results uh, comparing uh, fulvestrant uh, to anastrozole in the first-line setting, uh, and I think they're complicated by varying doses of fulvestrant. Um, and so before we go on, um, I'd like to uh, ask the opinion of our panel uh, what they think the ideal patient uh, for treatment with fulvestrant is and what they think actually of the trials as well. Let's start with Hope and we'll go down the list. Well, you know, it's interesting. The SWOG trial uh, published by META in the New England Journal of Medicine was quite intriguing with this combination therapy because 40% of the patients had de novo metastatic disease. And in subset analysis, it appeared that those were the patients who benefited from the fulvestrant and astrazole combination. Interestingly, almost at the same time published in the JCO, Jonas Berg uh, had the FACT trial results. And that had a very similar design, except for only a small number of patients, 13% or so, had de novo metastatic breast cancer, and there was absolutely no difference. And the time to progression was about 10, a little more than 10 months in both arms of that trial. There's also combination data from the SOFIA study from Stephen Johnston that showed no benefit in com adding the two drugs together after progression on an AI. So, you know, you're kind of left with the idea that there may be a tiny number of patients you want to give combination to, but not too many. And I, I think we all like sequential therapy more. I think fulvestrant is a great option for patients progressing on aromatase inhibitors. I think we're trying to decide where we're adding in targeted biologic agents, uh, the one approved now being Everolimus that I know we'll talk about more. Uh, but I use fulvestrant in the metastatic setting in some order or other after aromatase inhibition. I've also used it occasionally in the adjuvant setting in patients who just can't tolerate anything and still have ER positive disease. We have no idea what the efficacy is, but I figure something is better than nothing. Fair enough. Any other comments? Mark, I mean, there's been some, some interest, I think, actually, uh, in mutations that are now being found with increasing frequency. Uh, in the ligand binding domain of the estrogen receptor. And potentially, could this be a marker for combination therapy as opposed to single agent? I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there as a wild idea. You know, the frequency of those mutations is actually quite small, and so uh, it can't possibly explain all of endocrine resistance uh, uh, at any rate. Uh, but certainly interesting and might be uh, worth exploring in future trials, but it would be a very niche uh, population. With regard to fulvestrant, I mean, the most important thing is getting the dose correct. And uh, this is an example where we had a targeted agent and we just did not have the, the optimal dose. And we now know the optimal dose based on a randomized phase three trial. And consequently, that makes redundant all of the earlier trials with lower dose fulvestrant. So uh, I think you, know, you can get as much uh, efficacy out of uh, fulvestrant 500 as you can with a combination of anastrozole plus fulvestrant mm -hmm. 250. So that would be probably a lot more friendly regimen, virtually guarantees compliance if people come in for their injection, uh, as opposed to the PO uh, regimens. So uh, certainly um, it's a consideration for any steroid receptor positive metastatic breast cancer patient in some line. Okay, Denise, any comments? You know, I think um, the, the dosing certainly has been an issue that's plagued fulvestrin. But even if I look at the dosing now at 500 versus 250, I mean, the difference was not all that remarkable. I think the more interesting now is combining these with some of the targeted agents and these resistance or escape pathways um, that make me look at endocrine therapy now as a combination therapy of an endocrine agent with a more specific targeted agent, such as the CDK4, 6 inhibitors, mTOR inhibitors, the PI3 kinase, I think that whole domain is really opening a new world for our endocrine positive patients. Yeah, and I think a really practical point, whether you're going to use fulvestrin or fulvestrin plus an AI, is you have to be prepared 
to sit and wait for a while. And I know I've seen a lot of second opinions lately where they get to about the four week point and the patient's not feeling better or something's changed. The I think. Tumor marker doesn't go down. Well, yet. I didn't want to mention that, but that's a, that is an example of, of you know some of the second opinions I've seen. And I think no matter what endocrine agent you start a patient on in the metastatic setting, you got to give it some time to work. I think you either have to go all in or you have to make a decision to treat the patient with chemotherapy. I don't think the patients serve very well just giving them three to four weeks of endocrine agent, no matter what you're giving, and then deciding that that's not, whether the patient or you as the provider, and I get in this situation a lot too, where you just are anxious to see a benefit, but I think that that's the take home point, whether you're using, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with using an estrogen and full vestment. We do have a positive study in endocrine therapy naive patients that led to a survival benefit. That's the SWOG study, if you look at that subgroup. So if um, I don't perceive that there's a lot of extra toxicity in using the doublet, so I will use it. But no matter what you use, you gotta pre be prepared to sit and at least give the drug some time to work. And if you can't do that and you ask it a priori, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have a freak out uh, as a provider at four weeks. And you probably should be treating that patient to begin with on some type of systemic chemotherapy. Joyce? I think <clears throat> we just need to know the results of whether 500 of fulvestrin versus a big study of an AI is, we need to know our best first line regimen because we got to go forward combining it with all these really good things. And mm -hmm. I think it's called the Falcon trial, a big phase three that's going on. So I think that the jury is still a little bit out because we're building with the palbocyclibs and other really cool agents towards better and better therapies. We do need to know, is it fulvestrin that's better or is it an AI? I don't think we fully understand that yet.